From the book of Revelation, chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. When I was flying recently across a, a dry area of the Australian outback, I noticed a meandering line of green uh, across the dry expanse. I knew immediately that though I could not see water, there was a river down there. Rivers bring the water of life. The water not only holds life within it in the form of fish and other aquatic creatures, but also it brings life to the surrounding countryside watering the trees along the, its banks, occasionally flooding the surrounding area, and by human intervention and channeling, it waters human communities, stock and crops that otherwise could not live there. The river is also a fun place for fishing, uh, swimming or just relaxing in the shade of its banks. It's a peaceful environment. The writer of Revelation uses this powerful image of bright, clear river water to imagine the life-giving abundance of the kingdom of heaven. Admittedly, our rivers are not often like that. But without them, there would be barren places where human and natural communities are now thriving. The vision of Revelation is, of course, idyllic. The river of life is depicted as the ideal of which earthly rivers are at best an approximation. But the vision should and can inspire us to revere the river for its life-giving, life-sustaining and life-enhancing qualities. As we have settled around them, rivers have become an extension of ourselves. What we do in them, around them, and to them says a lot about who we are and how we value the sacred gift of life that they bring to us. Sadly, our record in all of this is at best patchy. At worst, uh, the life of rivers has been damned and exploited to the detriment of all other life forms or used simply as a drain to carry away our dross and deposit it who knows where. And we don't care. A useful test of our stewardship of rivers is the golden rule, found in some form in all the major religions. In the Christian Bible it says, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Much of the controversy around rivers and their use is about what happens upstream. How do those who get the water before we do treat and use that water? Do they take too much? Do they pollute it with waste and agricultural chemicals? Do they care about us and do they treat us fairly? And of course, exactly the same questions can be asked about us in the way we use the river and its gifts. Do we do to others downstream as we would have those upstream do to us? Or do we simply make the most of what flows past our place and to hell with the rest? These are some of the dilemmas that beset the communities of the Murray-Darling Basin, for example, as it becomes obvious that environmental flows are not what they used to be. And irrigators are in distress about reductions in allocations to them, especially in the drier times. Furthermore, each downstream state questions the level of extraction of the state upstream of them. <clears throat> there are few signs that the golden rule applies here. As one New South Wales farmer said when hearing about the concerns of South Australians, especially in the large population of Adelaide, let them get their water from Lake Eyre. 
the assumption is that what flows through our place is ours. When competition rules, community suffers, and not just the human community. The vision of Revelation is this. The angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. Here is a vision to inspire us, a standard to which we can aspire. It starts with the insight that it is God, not us, who is at the centre. And the sacred river is a part of who God is, flowing, outpouring, life-giving gift of productivity and grace. May we find our rightful place in the overall scheme of things and be part of the rhythm of the giving and receiving of life. May our love indeed be like a river.